So here we go. Uh, welcome to my uh, Commodore 64 Basic Basics series. I'm uh, planning on doing a couple of these, uh, and I'm sticking with the uh, disk commands uh, for this lesson. Um, so we are going to work with the 1541 disk drive uh, and the uh, commands that you use with it. Now, to start off, the Commodore 64 has BASIC 2.0, uh, which doesn't have many uh, disk commands built in. So there is a rather cumbersome way of uh, sending commands to the disk drive, which I want to uh, show. And there's some surprising uh, elements there. Uh, as a side note, uh, Bill Gates of Microsoft back in the day wrote uh, the BASIC interpreter. Uh, Commodore bought it. Jack Tramiel was smart not to uh, uh, go with uh, Bill's suggestion to pay three dollars per uh, computer. Jack told him, uh, "No thanks, I'm already married," uh, and he paid him, I think, twenty-five thousand uh, dollars for uh, the entire image uh, with uh, limitless use, which he, uh, uh, which he did. <laughs> you know, he. he uh, Every Commodore 64 has a version of uh, Bill Gates' uh, basic, more or less. I mean, uh, Commodore changed uh, some things along the way. Um, there's a if if you if you have a Commodore 128, it has Basic 7, which has many more disk commands. And people were smart enough to write all kinds of tools to make things easier. Uh, but just let's uh, let's get cracking here. Um, now I'm using Vice. As you can uh, probably see, it's an emulator. It just makes it easier to uh, to talk and uh, and demonstrate stuff. Uh, I have no disk in the device right now. Uh, this uh, device works exactly like a like a real Commodore, so uh, the commands will be all the same. Now, last time I already did a video. Uh, you know, check the description for the uh, for the first uh, video on this subject, but. Um, we uh, we entered commands like this uh, to open a channel uh, to device number eight, and then we'd say, "Okay, uh, uh, print," and then uh, uh, sorry, some command uh, like uh, you'll have to excuse me. Um, using a, an emulator makes it difficult. To recognize which keys are mapped where, and I keep forgetting where the where the asterisks and the uh, and the brackets are. So um, just bear with me. Um, you know, we'd ha we'd have some command like uh, scratch, uh, and then uh, some uh, file name, uh, and then we'd uh, uh, close the channel again, and that be it. Now there's. A, a, a a shorthand, which is no, not saying much. L let me just close this channel. Oh, let's close the right channel. Um, there is a, a sort of a shorthand. It's not that much shorter. It's still a cumbersome command like this. But you can just add a comma and then uh, add the command right here. So you don't have to uh, do the whole uh, print thing. Let me just close. So you can change it into a single uh, a single line right there. So I'm I'm going to be doing that uh, mostly. It's it's important to realize uh, that you close the um, uh, the channel properly because if you don't, you can get uh, damaged files. Now I've um, I, I'm going to quickly attach a disk image here. Uh, let's just uh, go with an arbitrary one. If I load the directory for this disk, I can just do that like like this. You can load the dollar sign and then the the device number, and I get a nice little list. Um, oh, I just see that the ass presents something. I. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know why. Uh, these are images that I got from somewhere. So let's um, uh, look at patterns. 
Um, I have uh, if if I if I wanted to uh, load a directory but not list all the files, just certain files, you know, uh, uh, the uh, the wildcard uh, patterns that we uh, that we know and love uh, right now, we're also present on the Commodore as well. So we have the uh, the asterisk, which basically replaces any number of letters uh, and doesn't matter what it is. And there's the question mark, which replaces a, a single letter. So if I looked at the directory as it is again, right, and I wanted to load a directory of uh, all the files that start with B1 and then a hyphen and then uh, a B, and it doesn't matter what comes after, I would go like this. Now you can see that I've added the, uh, the dollar zero sign. Uh, to um, be able, if I d if I list it now, I just get the B1 bomber file, which is uh, nice because uh, this dollar one uh, and the colon uh, means that I can uh, add a pattern to the to the the filter that I apply to the directory. Um, as you can see in the directory on the right side. These are all uh, program files. Now, let me uh, detach the disk image and find a disk image with several different... There. Attach this one. If I looked at this directory, I would see that there is also a sequential file. The Commodore 64 disk drive knows several uh, file types, sequential files, relative files, uh, program files, and user files. Now, this has a... It also knows deleted files, DEL, but you don't see them. Um, but you could uh, uh, also filter on a, a file type. If I wanted to say uh, see all the sequential files, I could do the same thing, $0 and a colon uh, and I have to use a pattern but if the pattern doesn't matter I just say an asterisk and I I add a, an equals sign and I say S for sequential it would load only the sequential files now S is uh, for sequential files uh, P is for PRG files and we have, uh, well, uh, R for relative files and U for uh, user files. Oh, user files. So, a couple of ways of um, filtering. That's nice. Now, there's this um, common uh, mistake that, that I've made for a long time and that is to do with uh, this command. If I wanted to load the first file on a disk uh, I would use the asterisk like this. Now that is actually incorrect. The asterisk says it's, it's a special case and it says load the file that was last used. So when a manufacturer makes a game it makes they make sure that the last file used um, uh, is the one that you need to load to start the game. So commercial games would usually work if you uh, executed this command. If you wanted to um, uh, load the first game on the disk, the first file on the disk, already talking games, you would have to do um, this. This actually loads the first file, and just the asterisk loads the last used. There is a difference. Um, what else? Oh yeah, in, in some cases, especially when you start making sequential files and user files, there is always the possibility that you create a file without closing it. Um, that will create a splat file. Now if I looked, oh sorry, 
a splat file, which is basically, I think, a Commodore joke, calling it a splat file, because it's just a, a file that went splat. Um, it will have uh, to the, well, either to the left or to the right of the file type, so the PRG or the SEQ uh, mark, uh, it will have an asterisk. So if you ever come across a file that says, like, the, oh, sorry, this... I think it's actually on the on the right side. So again, it goes like this. And that is a splat file. It's a broken file. You need to be careful with that. You can't just scratch a broken file. You have to validate or collect uh, the disk to, uh, to remove those files. Um, so that's that explained. Now, sometimes uh, um, you get... Uh, a disk error. You remember when the the red light on the disk keeps flashing and it'll just keep on flashing until you turn it off and on? Well, you don't have to do that. I'm just gonna gonna detach the disk image here to to be able to create an uh, create an error. So I've removed the disk from the uh, from the drive and I'm going to load the directory and the bottom right you will see the disk light you know and there is an error now I can read the error message but I have to do it in a basic program so I go like this open 15 8 15 and now here's the reason why I have to do it in a basic program I have to input and I can't do that from the command line. Input 15, error number, error message, error track, error sector. I want to print them. Error number, error message, error track, error sector. And close the channel again. Do that again. Close 15. I list that program. If I run it, I will say, see, hey. I've got an error message, number 74, the drive is not ready, um, which is different from the basic error that I got. It says file not found. But the reason for that is because the drive is not ready. ready. There is no track and there's no sector, so they are both zero. And the error has cleared, which is what we wanted. So this is a good way, especially when you're programming with a disk drive, to find out what went wrong with your disk, and you don't have to turn it on, uh, off and on again to uh, to remove the flashing light. Now, an error number of zero means that everything is okay. When you've scratched files, you will get an error number of one, uh, and the I think the E T, so the the um, the error track. Uh, mentions the number of files that you've deleted. Uh, saving. Okay, saving, saving, saving. Do we have anything? Oh, sorry. Do we have anything? Um, oh, we have this program still. Um, we had saving uh, last time. There's not much different other than when you save a a program let's see do I have a, a disk attached now not sure actually no I don't think so no no there's no disk attached let's run the program read error okay let's create a new disk an empty one so we're just gonna go with uh, uh, Highlander test whatever we'll call it I uh, dot D sixty four said create image cannot create image file why not that's funny create image cannot create image file. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've cre uh, it, we've created a new image and attach it. So we've created a new image. 
it's an empty image and I want to reset it so I'm gonna say open 15 blah blah, blah. we want to uh, say new drive zero we want to give the disk a name so disk name we want to give it an ID two characters as long as it, that cannot be like uh, a basic keyword like uh, or or if and we have to wait for that to finish so we have to check the drive light uh, while this command is running and when it is done I can uh, close the channel again yeah the 35 tracks and it's done and I close I have a program here. I'm going to save it, right? I'm going to save it, and I'm going to call it um, disk error. Saving disk error. Okay. So that's been saved to the disk. Let's uh, make sure that it has disk error. There we go. Okay, um, now suppose I wanted to rename this file because I think disk error is stupid. Here we go again. Uh, we say rename di uh, disk number, new name, disk fault, equals old name disk error close 15 let's see what happens we list the directory again oh, ho, 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 it's worked something worked <laughs> so that's a rename now there's also the compare command the compare command is a bit silly really because what it does, uh, it compares the disk image uh, with the memory image. If I did a verify of this file right now, the verify would fail because I have nothing in memory. What I could do is say, uh, let's load. Well, we're not going to bother with typing the whole damn thing. Okay. Now this is the program in memory, which is the same as on disk. So I could type verify. Now as you can see, verify is another uh, DOS command. I could say disk fault. And it's going to check for me. And it says verifying OK. So that means that uh, uh, the image in memory is exactly the same as on disk. If I did new and I did the verify again it would say verify error why because there's nothing in memory um, okay there's one more thing that I want to uh, say um, when you see a let's um, go back to the directory see that as an example we've seen that some PRG files or some disk files I keep pressing shift there have a have an asterisk beside them which means it's a it's a splat file so it's a damaged file some have um, the uh, smaller than sign next to them and that means that the file is locked and a locked file cannot be deleted with uh, with a scratch command so if you ever I've, I've, I've seen I've, I've seen these and I think uh, that is uh, caused by people wanting to protect their data. You just lock the files. Probably also a way of unlocking the files. But I haven't seen that yet. So um, I just thought I'd, I'd leave it with this. Just just a couple of simple commands uh, for you to, uh, to play with. And I don't want to make it too long. So uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have any tips, um, then please feel free to let me know. Thank you. Bye-bye.